all you cool cats and fine felines. It's Leah and Gwen. And today we're at the Peabody Hotel in Memphis, Tennessee. And we're going to tell you a little story about the Peabody Ducks and the history here. So what are we going to do? Get into the group. That's right. Little, little ducks everywhere. More little ducks, little mallards. It's a fine hotel. It's a beautiful hotel. It's, it's probably the most beautiful hotel and most historic hotel in Memphis. And look at, look at the gorgeous flower arrangement here. Look at that beautiful flower arrangement. With the ducks everywhere. We'll, we'll walk a little closer so you can see the ducks. This, this hotel was open in 1869. And we'll walk you right over here. One night I was here with my mother and my sister and my father. And Danny Thomas was playing this piano. It was amazing. You never know who you're going to see at the Peabody. But let's walk right over here and you can see the ducks. And then we'll go up to the penthouse, okay? See the little duckies in the fountain? There's two there. These are the most spoiled ducks in Memphis. <laughs> There's two there. Let's see. Where's the male? On this side. There he is, right there. There's the male mallard right there. Let's walk over there and see him. Look how pretty he is. Pretty little and mallard. majestic little guy. And the flowers are always gorgeous. Not to mention the work on the fountain itself. Now, they used to have little ashtrays here and they would clean them out like every 30 minutes or anytime everybody put a, a butt in it and they would stamp a little mallard into the sand where you'd put your ash. It was pretty swanky. See the duck on the floor is Santa a duck palace. Oh, duck palace. That's where we're going. Going down. All right. Look how beautiful the floor is, and look how beautiful that looks hand painted. The elevator doors and all the tile. Yeah, the mosaic the tile. That is beautiful. And look at the other hand painted elevator. This is the roof of the famous Peabody Hotel. Look at the fire escape all the way down. Could you imagine having to go all the way down those stairs if there was a fire? Oh my gosh. But if you were up here on this level and there was a fire, better go down all those steps. Look at the detail. And the little ducks. Beautiful. And the brickwork. And like Lynn said, the little ducks. The little ducks. And we had the FedEx Forum over here. That's where the Memphis Grizzlies play for the NBA. We've seen a lot of concerts there, too. Over here, you can see the Mississippi River. And you can see part of the Memphis Bridge. It makes an M. You can only see one of the little the arches. But um, that's the Mississippi River right over there. The mighty Mississippi. Mighty Mississippi. And it's awfully windy up here. Most people don't really realize how much time it takes to do something like that. A design like that. And, and that design is on every window throughout this whole hotel. That's pretty swanky. That is a lot of time. Okay, see this building right here? This, this is the duck 
ducks that swim in the fountain. This is their house. This is their little house. I hope you can see inside. This is their little, their little bath right there with the fountain. And see, they've painted a little mural of Memphis on the back wall. And they even have a little mini Peabody hotel they can hang out in. <laughs> and their little astroturf. And their, their little pedestal over here. So after, after they come out of the fountain every day at 5 o'clock, they walk them back up here. But every morning at 11 a.m., they march those ducks downstairs with a red carpet, put them in the fountain, and every day they march them back upstairs at 5, 8, 5 p.m. Fabulous sign up here on top. That is a famous sign. It's lit up red at night. It is beautiful. Like I said, this hotel was opened in 1869. And in the 1930s, something, something really funny happened. Let me tell you the story. Okay, so in the 1930s, the manager of the Peabody had been out hunting. And him and his buddy had come back to the Peabody to have a few drinks and rest after they had been hunting. And they brought their decoys. And, of course, back in the day, they weren't fake. Decoys were real ducks. They were allowed to do that back then. And so they thought it would be funny if they put their decoys in the fountain. And everybody that walked by thought that was just so cool to have ducks in the fountain. This big, beautiful fountain with the flowers that you saw earlier. And so they got the great idea that, hey, maybe we should start a tradition and have ducks in the fountain. And then later on, they had hired a guy that had worked for the circus briefly. And so they named him the Duck Master. And every morning at 11 a.m., he trained the ducks to come down from their penthouse, down the elevator, walk on the red carpet, get into the fountain and swim from 11 a.m. until 5 p.m. And then every afternoon, we're going to show you this, at 5 p.m., they roll the red carpet out and the duck master gets the ducks, walks them back down the red carpet into the elevator, and they bring them back here to the duck palace at the top of the Peabody Hotel in Memphis. Right there, I Bank. That's the tallest building in Memphis. It's not a big city, but it, it, it feels like home to us. It's only 60 miles from, from Jonesboro where we live. And so growing up next to Memphis, it just it just seems like home. The Mississippi River. We don't really feel like tourists here. No, not at all. It is actually absolutely gorgeous up here. And it looks like they're setting up for an event, maybe a wedding. You can see down there, uh, there's there's AutoZone Park. That's yeah, where the Redbirds play. Memphis Redbirds play. Right down there. Kind of a funny story. Right down there on this side where those shrubs are. On the other side of that little square brick building, that's where Pop hit his pocket knife before we went into the game one time. So they did. He was afraid they were going to take it from him before you go through the security right over there underneath the part where it's gated off. Pop's my dad. <laughs> he had that pocket knife forever, and they wanted it. they wouldn't let him in with his pocket knife, and so yeah. he hit, he hid it. So he goes and hides it in the shrubs. Well, it, and that kind of reminds me of uh, one another time story. when we went to the Rolling Stones and I brought my purse and they wouldn't let us in with it. And it was in Jacksonville. It was in Jacksonville, Florida. And Lynn told me he was like, she I was, was like, let's just go, go home because I was so, I was just so tired. And by that time, I, when I found out I couldn't go with my purse, we had walked so far from the car. And Lynn was like, Leah. <laughs> Put your purse in that shrub. We're going to go inside and see the Rolling Stones, and Did we'll find it when movie? we come back out. And 
my $300 purse was still in that shrub. Yeah. Back inside. Lynn found a pet. Oh, two pets. Two little pets. <laughs> I remember those from when I was a little girl. My mother used to bring me and my sister to the Peabody after every concert we saw in Memphis. And we saw a lot of them. And we would come back here after the concert and sit here in this beautiful lobby and wait. And a lot of times we would get to meet the people who we just saw the concert of. It was, it, I have such good memories in this hotel. Right where you see those six people around that round table, they say that's where Elvis signed his contract with RCA. Lynn. Hello. <laughs> 84. Look at the little telephones and the, the little notepads and pens. That's just something you don't see anymore. Well, it's not. Fancy soirees here at the Peabody. Oh, can you imagine being a bride in here and dancing? It's like Cinderella. Oh, <laughs> look how beautiful it is, Lynn. The ballroom. Hey, let's set the ballroom. Oh, where are we going? One, two, one. <laughs> uh, just... Ew, that's as good as we do <laughs> but i'm uh, not too bad for two little kids from arkansas <laughs> oh a little peacock over here little peacock little fountain Another little peacock. Beautiful. That square piano was custom built for Francis Scott Key in 1838. It was used until his death in 1843. This lavishly hand carved detail extends all around four sides of the rosewood case. That's right here. Look. It is. I have never seen a piano like that. Look at that. That is like a. That is. Like a dresser. Uh, look at the legs. The intricate detail. For Francis Scott Key. That is amazing. And it's here in the Peabody in Memphis, Tennessee. And the ones that doesn't know Francis Scott Key. He's the one that wrote the Star Spangled Band. That's right, Lynn. Good job. Yeah. And this is Lansky's. This is where Elvis and B.B. King would shop. Tour. Elvis played that guitar on his comeback tour. And and Lisa Marie brought it in. Wow. And then his coat's right here. Wow. Go watch it. Yeah. Oh, That is Doug. He's a duck master. You two will have been eyewitness to the world famous march of the Peabody Duck. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and your attention, please. 
Welcome to the historic Peabody Hotel. At the center of the Grand Lobby, the point where the Mississippi Delta has been set to begin, stands the classic Peabody Fountain, carved from one piece of Italian travertine marble. Although famous in its own right, the fountain is better known the world over because of its residence. If I may direct your attention to the fountain now, you will witness a tradition begun in the 1930s at the South Grand Hotel. An experience uniquely yours as a guest of the Peabody. Preparing to return to their penthouse on the for the night. Ladies and gentlemen, they come. the launch of the world famous Peabody Ducks. <laughs> Sun's bright. I gotta stay cool. Ooh wee! <laughs> Thank you for joining us on the tour of the Peabody with the ducks. And on behalf of me and Lynn, stay groovy. Rock on. <laughs>